If you haven't gone over and checked out part one of the Halloween challenge, I implore you to do that first because this is a part two episode. I see you trying to be sneaky over there. I'm watching you. And here we go. If you guys remember from last week's Halloween challenge, I am working on this pretty baby right here and we did some pretty cool stuff like I showed you the first time I ever used a paint sprayer which was, uh, yeah, it was great. It was fun. Um, highly recommend getting one for sure. But we started working on this piece, did some repairs, and now we are finally to where we are now, taking off the tape. So satisfying. This piece of tape was actually so stuck on there that it tore off the veneer underneath, which I was pretty bummed about, so I ended up having to repair that. But I made sure to save the veneer that came off on the tape, so if you guys ever run into this problem, peel it off as carefully as you possibly can, and then set it aside. I just compared it just to see and make sure if there was any pieces missing from the veneer, but it just so happened that there weren't, so I put those babies aside and saved them for later. And once all the tape was off, I went in there to make the repairs and I just got some wood glue and put it on the back of the ripped off parts of veneer and then rubbed it around with my finger, making sure to cover pretty much every surface well with uh, the glue, just making sure I had a good coat on every part so that every part would stick as well as possible. And then I kind of, you know, puzzle pieced my way in there and made it as fitting as possible. But once it's off, it's never going to go back on like it was before, unfortunately. So I just did it as closely as possible. And anything that spilled out, like any extra glue that came out from underneath, I just made sure to rub down, rub around, and rub off as much as I possibly could. That way there was no buildup or excess out of the border of the tear. Then I did the same thing with the other piece and let that dry so that I could sand it up and get it nice and smooth as possible once it was dry. And after taking a closer look, I realized that there was a little bit of seeping that was going on underneath my tape when I was painting. 
So I went in there with a razor blade and just kind of scraped the surface of the veneer off so that that paint would come up as well. And this is the first time I had ever done this before. So I was kind of figuring out the angle that worked and uh, the positioning that worked for my hand and all that sort of stuff to try to get these edges clean. And I would recommend just doing the same thing. Just be, you know, uh, slow and cautious and make sure you're doing this safely if you ever try it. And once I did all that and the glue was dry, I went in with a 300 grit sandpaper and then went in with Restore Wood Finisher. And yeah, it's looking uh, pretty nice. So with this bottom door, it actually wasn't closing all the way. And if you guys are watching this and are going to take off your door, make sure to always do it before you start painting. Because if you do it after you paint, then you have to fix up your paint job afterwards if you end up scuffing it or anything like that. And it's just a lot easier to do beforehand. So take a lesson from me and do this before. But anyways, yeah, so this door wasn't closing all the way and I had a feeling it was because the hardware, the hinges were bent and so I had to go in there and take them off but the hinges, the screws that went into them were really, really bent and damaged so I had to go in there with a hammer and pliers to get the screws off because they would not come out. I had to work and work and work and work to try to get these babies off. So I just kind of hammered the hinges off of there and screwed them out and look at how damaged they are. So damaged, my goodness. And that was, you know, with me of course, whacking at them and, and bending them, but still they were that bent and damaged probably even before I got working on them. And in order to make the other hinges match, I decided to take off the other door and replace the hinges on that one as well. And once those babies were off, I went ahead and sprayed those hinges that I got gold and yeah, let those dry. And while I let those dry, I painted the little splotches so that they wouldn't show. I painted them in the same black as the rest of the piece. And once those dried and everything was dried that I was waiting for, I went ahead and put the doors back onto the piece just the way they were, making sure to put some pilot holes in the places where the hinges were going because they were not the same size as the original hinges. And you always wanna make pilot holes. It makes it easier for your screws to go in and it keeps the wood from splitting. So now that all the doors and drawers are back in, I can get started on my sketch for my Monstera plant. And I'm just using a pencil and just sketching right onto the paint. I didn't put any top coat on it. If you want to put top coat on it first and let it dry before you start sketching, you can also do that, but I didn't see the need here. So I just went ahead and used some images that I found on Google and used pictures that I took of my own Monstera plant and use that kind of as inspiration and kind of reconstructed my own Monstera on the surface of this piece. All right, gang. So I am getting ready to paint uh, that. And so what I'm using is acrylic paint. This is white, this is black, and this is green. And the brushes that I'm gonna be using today are probably gonna be limited to these four brushes. Um, we'll see. I might need to use another one, but for now it's just these brushes. And then this is for the main body of the piece um, or the main body of the leaves, I should say. This is for like the detail, edges, all that sort of stuff. This is gonna be for gold. And then this is going to be for blending, by the way, so soft. 
Like you see those dogs getting pet by like makeup brushes and stuff, but like, have you ever done it to yourself? It's great. Anyways, we all get like, you know, packages in the mail with hardware, uh, new tools, paint brushes, all that sort of stuff. Um, so if you guys ever find yourself, you know, needing a blending palette or a painting palette, just use some of your old packaging. I'm gonna be using some Amazon packaging today, mixing up my paints on here and uh, yeah, let's get started. Now the doors are finally back on, so I put the drawers in and got started on my sketch for my Monstera plant. And if you guys don't know yet, this concept is going to be more of like a um, abstract kind of thing. So it's going to be a furniture's version of a tiger hiding in the forest. So the piece itself is going to be the cat. And then the leaves, of course, are going to be the jungle aspect. So it's a piece of furniture dressed up as a cat in the forest, which I think is pretty cute. So for the lighting on this piece, I didn't really want the lighting to be too bright. I didn't want, you know, this to be like super, super visible. I kind of wanted the Monstera to blend into the piece itself. And so I was really using dark tones that like rich, deep forest green and some blacks mixed in there. And then where the light was hitting it, I decided to go in there with some lighter colors that you will see me kind of building onto as I go. But um, I found out quickly that or I found out actually later on in the process that the paint dries a lot darker than I had anticipated. I went back and looked at my paint and it just didn't pop as much as I wanted it to. So that was definitely something that I did learn this time around. Um, I would definitely go in there with some brighter highlights now that I know that it dries like that, but you know, you live and you learn, and I know better now for next time. You can really see the bright colors fading in this clip here. As you watch that top leaf dry, you see the colors just get dimmer and dimmer as it dries. And um, it was, it was kind of disappointing because I really liked that glowy feel that I had with that light green on top. And it still kind of has that, it's just not nearly as visible as I thought it would be. So yeah, I was kind of bummed out about that, but say la vie. My original plan for the gold ended up not being what I did once I got there. Um, I definitely want to do my original plan at some point. Um, I don't want to tell you what it is because I want it to be a surprise when I actually do end up doing it. But um, yeah, gold for me is always the, the fun part, you know? You get to accent your piece and really add cool elements and details with the gold and I just I love gold details if you haven't you know found out from my 
previous videos. Um, it's one of my favorite elements to put in there. And yeah, so this was a, a fun process. It was very cold and weird painting something. I usually paint with my canvas on the floor when I do paint. So painting when it was upright was definitely a new learning experience for me. And, uh, very strange, but, you know, my hand shaking with the cold and, you know, the inexperience of painting in this position was uh, not nearly as difficult as I thought it would be. And it actually ended up turning out pretty, pretty, pretty. So once the gold paint was dry, I went in there with some clear wax and just polished off this whole piece to add another protective layer. This paint is an all-in-one paint, so technically you don't need one, but you know, a little extra protection never hurt anyone. And also, I wanted to protect my paint that I just added and I wanted it to match the rest of the piece, so I just decided to rub it all over so that way it would be the same consistency and finish as the rest of the piece. So using a clear wax as top coat is pretty easy. Uh, there are some steps that you have to do, like first you have to put it on, and I prefer to use a wax brush with this, but you can use a lint-free rag as well. Just make sure that it's clean and free of dust so it doesn't get into your wax. And then you wanna go area by area, making sure to wipe off the excess wax with a lint-free cloth. Um, after you get it completely covered with a layer of wax. And so as you can see, I'm going in small little circles here and then wiping it right off afterwards to get all that excess off. For the sides of the drawers, I'm actually doing something that I've never done before. I am putting tissue paper on the sides of the drawers and I am putting a base down of top coat, polycrylic, and I don't really think it matters what finish it is, but I'm using a matte finish. And I'm grabbing the tissue paper corner by corner with my lovely boyfriend here. And we're just lining it up with the dovetail joints and then pressing it flat against the uh, top coat and the top coat will act as an adhesive and instead of using glue or anything like that you just uh, use the top coat and I have heard again this is my first time doing it so I'm not a hundred percent sure but I've heard that the wrinkles kind of take care of themselves after a while so I just pressed them as flat as possible and then didn't stress about it, just kind of left them there and then went over it with another layer of the top coat, just to kind of soak it in and make sure that it was really stuck to it. And then once I was done with that, I went over the edges with a sanding block just to get the uh, rest of the paper off. So with the sanding block, you want to kind of grind it away from the face of the drawer. So see, I'm pulling it towards me and this will make sure that you're just grinding the edge and none of the surface that you want the decoupage or paper to be on. And it won't rip any of the surface and you'll just get a nice clean line.
All right, guys, so that is the piece. It is the final product, and honestly, I like it a lot. It didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to, but it still came out beautifully. I am very proud of this, and I love the way that it ties in with, like, you know, the furniture version of a jungle cat in a forest. I really like how the leaves blend into the piece after a while, you know, there's just a very subtle hint of light on those leaves, which, which I had personally never tried before. I'd, I've never tried actually painting, one, painting a, a picture on a piece, and then two, having such dim light on my subject, so it was pretty challenging, but I honestly am very proud with the way that it turned out and yeah. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a fun and safe Halloween. And thank you so much for staying tuned for this second episode Halloween reveal. Make sure to go check out the other challenge videos. They are in the Halloween challenge playlist listed on my channel. So make sure to go check out the rest of those videos and I will catch you next time. Stay flippin'. Mwah.